So we've looked at some relationships between x and y and we've seen we can do table of values and we can do uh, graphs of these functions and we can list uh, domain and range as a set of points. What we're going to take a look here now is a special type of relations that we call functions. And a function is really just a relation that satisfies this criteria for every x value so for every x value there exists only one y value. So if I make an x value of 5, say, then there will be only one y value at that, at that point. As soon as we have two different y values, so let's say x is 5, and let's say we can have a y value of 3 and a y value of 7, then we're not a function. So we'll consider, we'll look at some examples here of um, relations that are functions and some examples of some relations that are not functions. So first let's look at some graphs that I've drawn here. So remember a function for every x value only one y value. So if you look at this graph here for every single x value on here you pick one say x is 3 if you look up there's only one place on the graph where x is 3 only one y value. When x is minus 1 there's only one y value there. When x is minus 3 there's only one y value there. So this would be a function because for every x value you will only find one y value. But if you look at this one for instance here when x is 2 there's a y value right here so this point here would be the point say 2 3 and down here there's another y value of minus 2 when x is 2. So this would not be a function because there's an x value here that's generating two different y values and in fact there's there's several of them. So not a function. Now the shortcut rule when you have a graph is simply to do what's called a, a vertical line test. Now if you can draw a vertical line and usually I just put my pencil on the paper but you can see here if I draw a vertical line I'm going to intersect my graph at two different places that means it's not a function because when x is a certain value it's generating two y values. Whereas here if I draw vertical lines on this graph in every single place I'm only crossing the graph once. Therefore that graph is a function. So uh, quickly you can tell if you have a graph if it's a function or not by doing the vertical line test. If you draw a vertical line and only crosses the graph once at every place then we have a function. If you draw a vertical line and it crosses the graph at Two different, two different places or more, uh, then we do not have a function here. It did not pass the vertical line test. Now looking at the table of values, so here you've got to kind of analyze it and look and see for every x value do we only have one y value. Well when x is 2 we have a y value of 3 and I don't see any other 2's down here so that's good. There's only one y value when x is 2 there's only one y value when x is 5, there's only one y value when x is 9, and there's only one y value when x is 8. Now we happen to have the same y value here but that's okay. These are two different x values so if we were doing a graph of this it would be like you know x is 2, y is 3, I'll just use this one here, and then when x is 8 y is back to 3 again but that's okay because you know the graphs the graph's just a series of points along here. It's not like the points are stacked up on top of each other. So this is okay. This is a function. But over here, you can see when x is 3, we get a y value of 7. And then down here, it says when x is 3, you've got a y value of 1. That's no good. That's a situation like this. When x is 3, we've got a y value of 7. I guess that would be up here. And when x is 3, we've got a y value of 1. So we've got two points kind of on top of each other there. That's no good. That's not a function. We have two different y values for the same x value. And then uh, the points whoop, the points are very similar here to the table of values. We'd look for the x values. Um, whoops, I did this one wrong, didn't I? Hold on here. Let's change this one to a 6. So let's see, when x is 2, we got a y value of 3. When x is minus 5, we got a y value of 4. When x is 6, we got a y value of 0. And when x is 7, we have a y value of 1. So each x value is generating a unique y value. 
Whereas over here, again, when x is 3, we've got a y value of 6. Down here we have another x value of 3. They're the same, and it's generating a different y value. So not a function, because we have an x value that's generating two different y values. So that's, that's all a function is. It's just a relation that generates one y value for every x value. Now we have some uh, notation or ways of writing equations of functions um, that uh, that's a little bit different than how you saw it before. So here would be a function and you might have seen it look like this in times past. y equals 2x plus 3. Okay, that would be a function. 2x plus 3. So we could put some values in for x and they would generate some y values. And this would be a function because for every x value we will get a unique y value. But mathematicians have have liked to express instead of y equals 2x plus 3 typically we'll use this. And This is a little more meaningful when we're talking about functions because often we have more than one function that we're working with. So this f is simply a letter assigned to name the function. So f and then in brackets, this is telling us what the variable is going to be in the function. And since usually our variables are x, often we will use this expression. And we read it like this, f of x. Oh, this thing keeps coming up. I keep hitting something. Sorry. f of x. So this will be read f of x is 2x plus 3. And so this is just the name of the function. So it's telling us this is going to be the f function, 2x plus 3. We'll call that the f function and x will be the variable in the function. So I could have, if I was working on another function, I might call that the g function. And maybe the g function looks like this. So f of x is 2x plus 3, and g of x is 5 minus x. So this is the f function, and this is the g function. So if I might say this then. I might say, well, find for me what f of 5 is. What does f of 5 equal? And you would know to take the f function, because I said I want the f function, that's this one. So now you know what function I'm talking about, the f one. And the x value here, I want you to replace it with 5. So take the f function and replace the x with 5. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to replace all of the x's. There's only one here, but I'm going to replace the x with the 5. And so now I just got to do some simple calculations here. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus 3 is 13. So f of 5 is 13. When I put 5 into this function, I got 13 out of it. And so that's how we would calculate that one. And then if I said, well, what's g of minus 2? You would know to take the g function, that's this one, and replace the x with minus 2. Okay. So here's an x, I need to replace the x with minus 2. And 5 minus minus 2 is like 5 plus 2, and 5 plus 2 is 7. So function notation, just a way of assigning variables or letters to represent or make the name of the function, and then in the brackets it tells us what the variable is going to be. Now these are really simple functions that you're learning in this course. Um, later on the functions will get you know, much more difficult and they might have more than one variable. So it, it may seem obvious to you right now that, okay, x is the variable, yes, I see that. But just understand that these things will get tougher as you get on into upper level mathematics and post-secondary mathematics. And then the notation becomes more meaningful. But let's look at a couple more examples here. So I've got two functions here, h of x, so the h function, x being the variable, the h function will be 4x minus 3, and the f function, which has m as a variable, the f function is going to be 2m plus 1. So if, it, if I want to find f of minus 3, this is saying go to the f function, that's right here, there's the f function, and replace the m replace m with minus 3. Okay, there's an m. I'm going to replace it with minus 3. 2 times minus 3 is minus 6. Minus 6 plus 1 is negative 5. 
So f of minus 3, when I stuck negative 3 in for m in the f function, I got an answer of minus 5. So that's, that's how we work with those. Now sometimes we can be told what the answer is. So here it's saying, what would x be, what would the input number be, if the h function equaled minus 9? So here's h of x, h of x is, the h function is 4x minus 3, so I'm just going to replace h of x here with 4x minus 3, because that's what h function is, and it says the h function equals 9. So 4x minus 3 equals 9. I'm going to try to find the x value now. So this is a simple linear equation. I just need to add 3 to both sides. 9 plus 3 is 12, and now I need to divide by 4 to isolate x. And so what I've found now is the input number. So if x were 3, and we can easily check our answer, if x were 3, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 minus 3 would equal 9. So that's how we work with, with function notations, and you can practice some of those in, in your, your textbook. We'll take a look at how we would graph some of these functions now. So say I'm asked to graph this function, and I've, I've actually made set this up as a bit of a word problem here. So the scenario is this. You're going to get some photocopies done of uh, some, some document. And the initial cost of the set up the photocopiers is $5. And then it's plus 10 cents, so 0 0.1 times the number of copies that you want. And so this could be expressed as a function in function notation. The cost as a function of the number of copies uh, that you want done is equal to 5 plus 0.1 times n. So if I'm asked to graph this this function, then I need to have, uh, keep hitting something on my computer and popping that thing up, cost, I'm going to do a table of values here, actually hold on, whoops, this should go and make sure I get this right, n here is our like our x values, that's our um, independent variable, and cost is my dependent variable. The cost of the photocopying depends on the number of copies that I make. So I'm going to do a table of values here, so I'm going to suggest, well, if I make zero copies, if n is zero, I'm just going to figure out what is c of zero, so putting zero in for n, 0 times this is 0, 0 plus 5 is 5. And then maybe I want to do 100 copies. I'll do another, another, uh, and put 100 into my function. So putting 100 in for n, 100 times 0.1 is 10, 10 plus 5 cost me $15. And if I wanted to make 200 copies, putting 200 in for n, 200 times 0.1 is 20, 20 plus 5 is 25, and maybe I'll do one more point here, I'll do 300, cost for 300 documents, 300 times 0.1 is 30, 30 plus 5, 35. Okay, so I've made, I've made a few uh, um, points in my table of values. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to erase this first, and then I'm going to sketch, sketch my graph. So I've made a graph up here. I've got my title, the cost of photocopying, and then I've labeled my axes. So I have my dependent variable, which is cost, like my y value, on my y-axis. So cost depends on the number of copies. So number of copies is kind of like my x values, my independent variable. And so I'm now I'm just going to plot some points here. So when n is 0, I'm going to get a y value of 5. So right here I'm going to have a point. When n is 100, I get a y value of 15. When n is 200, I'm going to get a y value of 25. When n is 300, I'm going to get a y value of 35. And I've plotted my points. And now I'm going to do my line that best fits through here.
and I've got a graph now that shows uh, this function. It shows the number of copies down here and the cost on here. And so if I wanted to find the cost for 150 copies, I could go up here. So this is where 150 would be. And I'd simply look up here to my graph line and then look across and see that it would cost me $20 to photocopy 150 pages of this document. So, um, so yeah, that's how we can graph functions. And just remember that a function is, uh, for every x value, we can obtain only one y value.